Okay, shalom, shalom. Kwame Yashala, Kuhloyim La, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweshai, Bahashim Rekha HaKadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth and just want to say the water toward the Akim, Akwaf. Let's all here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweshai to the best of their ability. This is Achanan Awaf. It's coming at you with another quick, quick lesson praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And um, saw this article um, in the economy news, money news. It says no cash accepted. Signs are bad news for millions of Americans. Okay, um, so let me play this little video. Because basically where this is at, it's like a, um, let me see exactly. Where is this? Uh, it's a, um, a park. Let me just read this little bit here. It says, how many people don't have bank accounts and just how difficult has it become to live without one? These questions are becoming increasingly important as more businesses refuse to take cash in cities across the U.S. People without bank accounts are shut out from stores and restaurants that refuse to accept cash. And really, they're supposed to. But, you know, this is what it's all boiling down to. Um, they pretty much um, started that with um, COV-19. <laughs> You know, where they was talking about how money might have the disease on it and the germs and, you know, all the hand washing they had everybody doing six feet apart and all this other shit. So you had the point where people weren't dealing with coins. You had certain places that just wasn't accepting, um, you know, um, cash currency at all. Now, I know here where I'm at, they came up with an ordinance or a law, you know, where they had to accept cash because a lot of people once the COV-19 thing went down. And it was over with the people that had stopped taking cash for that minimal amount of time. They, you know, just tried to keep it going. But, you know, they was like, you know, well, hey, COVID is over right now. You know, you have to start back accepting cash. It's against the law. OK, so. But anyway. It says, as it happens, a lot of people are still unbanked, roughly six point million in the U.S. The latest data shows, which is about a population of Wisconsin and outside the U.S., more than a billion people don't have bank accounts. I am a business school professor who researches society transactions from cash to electronic payments. I recently visited Seattle and was amazed by a mixed signal I saw in many storefronts. Numerous shops had one sign proudly proclaiming how welcoming and inclusive they were next to another sign saying no cash accepted. The, this tells people without bank accounts they are not welcome. Okay, so now I've seen this. This is, uh, where is this at? Mount, Ra Mount Rainier National Park in seattle okay so how is it that you know i don't even know how i'm the, i haven't been to a park i know they uh where i live you know they have you um when you renew your driver's license you can get the um you can pay an extra i think 12 dollars or something like that 15 dollars, whatever it is you know to get the sticker in your um, car window so to speak and it just lasts you i think throughout the duration of the year so it's a year pass for about 12 bucks but, you know, I'm not into none of that, man, <laughs> because, it, you know, Esau done done. He wants you to pay for every goddamn thing. Why the fuck you got to pay for nature, man, that the Lord created? But that shows you how um, far this man has gone, man. And he must be stopped, man. But anyway, this is one of those parks. Um, and. I don't get why they're not accepting cash. I mean, because they're still telling you to go to a store nearby. And get um buy tickets basically <laughs> if you got cash. <laughs> but let's see though. Let's play a little bit of the video. They might play a um commercial, of course. Then again, maybe not. Winter is still here at Mount Rainier National Park, but the park sees 70% of their nearly one million yearly visitors during the summer months. And this summer, people will need to have a credit card to enter the park as they switch to a cashless fee system. Some moments in nature are priceless. I love the mountains, I love the seasons here, I love the hiking, uh, it's just a, a pretty awesome place to be. But this is a place you do have to pay a fee to enter, fees that Mount Re Okay, yeah, them fees one cheap, let me see that again, god damn. Did I miss it? Yeah, let's go back to that real quick. Damn, one passenger vehicle is $30, motorcycles $25, walk-in, bicycles 15 bucks. Damn. They got an annual fee for $50. An inter eight, an inter 
an interagency annual eighty dollars. So these people just getting paid, man. Like goddamn, here it is. The Lord and created everything that's out there, and the so-called white man he done cut it off, and and and, and you got to pay to go see it. Incredible, bro. Anyway, <laughs> let's just just move on, man, because it is it, you know and. I'm not sure as to why. Maybe they got some theft problems or something. Who knows, man? You know, still, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices, though. We do understand that he's weeding out um, cash in a lot of areas. It's, people not really paying attention to it, but they really are. Because a lot more people are paying, you know, with um, um, card, tap pay, tap and pay. A lot of people are paying with their phones to tap and pay. You know, um, a lot of people are doing cash apps, you know, PayPal. You know, a lot of different electronic stuff, so... You know, your cash is, is phasing. We understand why it's phasing. You, you know, the the average person don't. Because when I went into the comment boards, I'm not seeing nobody really. Normally, you would see somebody say, they'll mention, you know, Revelation 13, 16. Normally. I, I went through maybe 10 or so comments. Maybe further in, somebody might have mentioned it. But I didn't see it right off, you know. But anyway, let's read a little bit more. It says, why would, why would someone want to avoid using banks? Every two years, the federal deposit, um, the FDIC basically surveys households about their connections to the banking system and asks people without bank accounts why they don't have one. People can respond with multiple answers in 2021. The top reason with over 40% of respondents choosing it was that they didn't have enough money to meet the minimum balance. So here you go. You got to pay for these people to keep your money. Then they loan your money and make interest off your money. And then they're charging you ATM fees for your money. You know, just, just it's, this man is out of his goddamn mind, man. Esau is just, he can never have enough. This is consistent with data showing that poor households are less likely to have bank accounts. And that's why a lot of the so-called poor families, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you Israelites, yeah, they, Jake going, they, they, you know, they going to they gonna railroad Jake into getting that, um, that MOTB, man, that market of beauty and the beast. <laughs> that, that goddamn chip this is what it's all boiling down to that's pretty much all that it is it says about one quarter of those earning less than 15,000 a year are unbanked among those earning more than 75,000 a year almost every person surveyed has some type of bank account the second and third most common answer shows that some people are skeptical of banks roughly one third of survey respondents agreed that avoiding a bank gives more privacy while another one said they simply don't trust banks <laughs> and hey you know, we've been seeing a lot of um, a lot of bank accounts been been getting frozen. A lot of bank accounts have been getting, you know, uh, knocked off. People haven't had access to their money. You know, it says rounding out the top five reasons were cost of dealing with the bank. More than one quarter of the respondents felt bank account fees were too high, and about the same proportion felt fees were too unpredictable. While many middle class and wealthy people don't pay directly for their bank accounts. Fees can be costly for those who can't maintain a minimum balance. A recent bank rate survey shows basic monthly service fees range from between $15 to $15. $5 to $15, so lock you. But not beyond these steady fees, banks earn $45 each time people withdraw cash from an ATM machine. And that shit is crazy. Here you go, you're trying to get $20 out and, and it costs you an extra five to get it. That shit is retarded, bro. But that's this is Esau shit, man. It says each time people, um, it says um, banks earn four to five dollars each time people withdraw cash from the ATM or need services like getting cashier checks. Unexpected bills can result in overdraft fees, about twenty five dollars each time an account is overdrawn, and people do that all the time. They make a lot of money off that, and it's not twenty five dollars. That shit gotta be probably about damn near fifty now, if not more. <laughs> I remember the last time I done an overdraft that was whoa I don't know man well over 10 years ago and it was $35 back then it says being unbanked in America the FDIC calls people without bank accounts the unbanked people with bank accounts but who primarily rely on alternative services such as check cashing outlets are called the underbanked because them check cashing places be getting paid too and they normally all in Jake neighborhood Jake going to you know he going to get his paycheck before he gets paid, basically as a loan, and they clipping his ass. It says the latest FDIC data shows of almost 6 million people unbanked and 19 million underbanked in U.S. households. Given that 2.5 people live in the average household, this means there are over 15 million people 
living in a home with no connection to banks, 48 million more in homes without a tenuous connection to banks. Combining the two figures means roughly one in every five people in the U.S. has little or no connection with a bank or other financial institutions that can leave them shut out from stores, restaurants, transportation, and medical providers that don't take cash. And you can see Esau, so you know the scriptures talked about he's smarter than Daniel. This motherfucker search out everything. So he knows exactly how many people roughly are out here that he doesn't have no control over, basically. That's pretty much what it's all about. The true number of unbanked people is likely higher than the FDIC estimates. The question on being banked or unbanked are supplemental questions added to a survey given to people at their homes. This means it misses homeless people transients without a permanent address and under documented um, immigrants these people are likely unbanked because you need to verify address and government issued tax identification number to get a bank account given roughly 2.5 million migrants cross the u.s mexican border in 2023 alone see they gonna and they gonna get at um jake coming across the border man there are millions more people in the cash only economy than the fdic estimates so they're gonna squeeze if they not, if nobody is taking cash anymore, you know what I'm saying. What are people gonna do? Esau is gonna force people. He's forcing people. He's he's making his move, man. How many people globally are unbanked? It says while the U.S. has relatively high rates of people with bank accounts, the picture is different in other parts of the world. The World Bank has created a database. See, these motherfuckers, they know everything. They done created a database that shows the percentage of each country's population that has access to financial services. The World Bank's definition of being banked in is broader than the FDIC's since it includes everyone who uses a cell phone to send and receive money as having a bank account. Overall, the World Bank estimates about one quarter of the world's adults <laughs> don't have access to a bank or a mobile phone account. So I'm telling you, it says, hey, this man, he searches out everything, man. He saw no every, this motherfucker is not Every, he's not leaving one stone unturned. But that varies dramatically by region. In countries that use the euro, almost everyone has a bank account. While in the Middle East and North Africa, only about half the population does. So they know this worldwide. A more inclusive economy. Many of us swipe our credit cards, tap our phones, or insert a debit card to pay without thinking. However, there are at least 6 million people in the U.S., and almost 1.5 billion worldwide who are unbanked. That's a lot of people worldwide. And you know Esau, he wants every single last one of them. What's the, um, that movie with, I uh, can't think of my man. I think it was King of New York. He said if it's a Nick bag sold in the park, I want a cut of it. <laughs> but Esau, he wants it all. And, and that's what's that. Uh, uh, the brother was bringing his scripture out earlier. Uh I think it's Obadiah. Salakia. Let me try Obadiah real quick. I think that's what it is. Salakia, bear with me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Verse 5. Obadiah 5. Verse 1 and 5. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 5. Salakia. If, th if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? Now Esau, he don't leave nothing. He wants it all. He wants to, he wants to 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 chip the entire population, man, and 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 then run on them, man. In the NLT, it says, "If these came at night and robbed you, what a disaster awaits you! They did not take everything." Those who harvest grapes always leave a few for the poor, but your enemies will wipe you out completely. See, how are the things that Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. And this is what's coming to Esau. But the point that I wanted to get was, it says, if these come to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? No, Esau not leaving nothing, man. That's the reason why he's constantly at war. 
He's constantly all over the earth. This man got everything. Even the elite, like the elite. What what more could you want, man, with, with, with all the shit that the elite have? They want the people, man. I'm just lock you. Know what happened? I guess that was pretty much about it on that, though. But I wanted to, let me see, what else did they have on that, though? What part was we at? Or the more inclusive part? Okay, it says, when businesses stop accepting cash, the unbanked are forced to use payment methods like pre -debit, prepaid debit cards. However, these prepaid cards are costly. For example, Walmart, one of the largest U.S. retailers, offers a reloadable basic debit card. The card costs $1 to buy and charges $6 per month in fees. In addition to $3 each time someone wants to load the card with cash at Walmart registers. Paying a minimum of $10 just to set up a debit card for a few purchases is a, steep, is a steep price. The next time you see a sign in a shop or a restaurant window stating no cash accepted, you're really looking at a business excluding many unbanked and underbanked people insisting that all businesses accept cash is a simple way to ensure everyone is financially included in the modern economy. Nah, that's not what it's all boiling down to there, buddy. Uh... But let me get the scripture and I can come back and get a couple of these comments. Because like I said, again, people just not, they're not um, aware. They they kind of have like this conspiracy theory awareness as far as like, you know, from a worldly carnal aspect. But these people don't, they have no idea that this is really going into the scriptures and that it's almost at the end of this world. You know, he's all about to get down, man. He's about to get down out here. You're hearing about this too much now. And it's, 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 it needs to happen, man. Revelation 13 and 16. And he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And it's all becoming digital. See? I can remember back in the days when... <laughs> You know, it was food stamps, you know, because a credit card is not that old. You know, I remember, you know, when they came out with credit cards, people were skeptical, but people started using them. Now, every then everybody had one. Then, you know, of course, you know, they had like stuff like food stamps. I can remember when, when they had a booklet. It was a booklet that they had, you know what I'm saying? And it was a $65 booklet, it had like little $20 bills in it, $10 bills, $5 bills. But it was like, you know, like if you've ever seen food stamps, you can look it up. You can Google it. But they went from that. Because um, a lot of people was abusing it. Just like um, J Jake abusing it right now. You know what I'm saying? They went from that to the card. Or, you know, like, you know, um, here they call it a bridge card or EBT card. or It could be whatever in whatever state. But it's, a you know, a card where they reload the money onto it. And Jake will be in a supermarket. I ran across a dude the other day in the supermarket. He was like, man, you spending cash? You know, because they want some cash. And they'll double up on what you're spending. So if you try, if you spending $20 in cash then they will get you $40 for worth of shit, you know what I'm saying, you know, so, you know, Jake's still scamming off of it, so to speak, you know, so they're gonna, you know, they're gonna eventually, all oh, that's gonna just phase, you know, you got the phone, you can do it with the phone, you got your debit card, you know, you got, you know, all these different methods of, um, but it's really all just coming down to your, people are not touching cash like that no more, I really only use cash, really when I go to the gas station, really myself personally, because they have, um, you know, well, here, if you use your debit card, they consider it to be credit and they charge you 10 cent more on the gallon, which is stupid as hell. So it's 10 cent cheaper if you're actually using cash. Now, some some gas stations, they will they've kind of caught on and they just like, well, you know, we'll do your debit same as cash because your debit is cash. You know, it's not like you're borrowing from from somebody. It's not a credit. This is money that I've worked for that's actually on a card. You know what I'm saying? It's just having to be on a card. What they'll charge you is if it's a credit card. And that's all throughout these names. See, they do Jake wrong. See, Jake is being overran, man, by them curses, man, of Deuteronomy chapter 28. But again, it's coming to a point where the cash is slowly leaving. You know what I'm saying? Because they done a real number on that shit during COVID-19. People really stopped dealing with cash real tough when it came to COVID-19 because there was a lot of stores and a lot of places that you would go into. And a lot of these banks, they don't even um, they don't deal with cash over the counter no more. You can't just, you know, a lot of these banks, you can't just walk into the bank and, you know, you used to be able to fill out a slip and say, hey, I want to, you know, um, 
take out a deposit. You know, some of them you still can because, you know, generally you can go in and just pass them your debit card or swipe your debit card. It's not like you got to fill out the paperwork no more. Swipe your debit card and put in, you know, how much you want. And um, they will, you know, give it to you. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, shit, that's only in, if you need a larger amount because you might as well hit the ATM machine if that's the case. But, hey, bottom line is it's coming to a point where you're not going to be able to buy or sell unless you go for Esau Edom's, the so-called white man's trickery, man. Because he wants to enslave everybody, even his own people. But he especially wants to enslave you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He, he, it's not enough that he still have you in slavery because you've never gotten out of it. But he wants to perpetually enslave you, man. He wants to take away every inkling or thought of being spiritual towards you. How about Shemiah was shy? He doesn't want you to have no access or no thinking of the Lord. man. He wants you to believe that he's your God. And the people that's going to take this, that's the, that's pretty much what they're saying. If you take this shit, <laughs> you take this, pretty much what you're, what you're saying is, you know, this so-called white man is my God. But uh, let's get verse 14. I mean, I'm chapter 14, Revelation 14 and 9. Now, this is what's going to happen if you take this shit, though. And it's entitled Doom for Worshippers of the Beast. Verse 9, it says, and a, and a third angel followed them saying without with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in, in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented and with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb so overall, I mean, you're just going to get that business, man. You're going to get a damn nuke to the face. You're just going to, you're going to, you're going to be in that, 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 when the missiles hit this place, man, you don't want no parts of that second death, man. And also chapter 16 right here, verse two, it says, and the first went and poured out his viol upon the earth and there fell a, a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them, which worship his, his image. So if you take that shit, man, they no telling what kind of uh, sores these going to be, man. You know what I'm saying? What kind of your skin bubbling out? Motherfucker can see, you know, some type of flesh eating disease can see your damn bone or something. <laughs> so you got to, you know, stand clear of Esau, man. See, it's coming to a point where you're going to either trust the Lord or you're going to trust in this so-called white man. And if you trust in the so-called white man, the Lord is going to tear your ass up. So it's best that you repent to the father, Yahweh, in the name of his son, Yahweh, Shai, and repent to the Lord and come under the banner, you know, uh, 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 of, of the Lord, man. Because he's the one that's going to provide. The Lord is the one that provides for every single person on this planet anyway. But the so-called white man, he is he has pushed his image out there as if it's him that's doing these things. And people really believe that it's him. Because, you know, you got a lot of people, they, they don't believe in the Bible. They don't believe in the Lord. They don't believe in these, these scriptures, man. But it's about to come a point where people going to really, they going to really know. They going to know that the Lord is real because he's going to show them. <laughs> he's going to show them in a real powerful way. So I just wanted to touch on this, man. And like I said, again, you know, you go into the comments. And this person says, how can they do this? When it says right on the bill, this is legal tender, tender for all private and public debts. This person says, I don't think they can. And, you know, it's, it's a few states and places that, that, that fights towards this stuff, you know, but it's eventually going to it's eventually gonna come a point where it's going to be a losing battle. They're not going to be able to win, you know what I'm saying? They, they win in a few little battles here and there, but it's going to overall come to a point where it's just that shit is going to be unbeatable. It says, I don't want a credit card machine around me. They charge a percentage every transaction and help push prices up. Uh, this person says, it's un-American. If they don't want to accept cash, move on. Good riddance to them. Uh, this person says, in other words, they don't want me as a customer. I'll take my business elsewhere. Well, you ain't going to be able to take your business elsewhere if, the, if everybody doing it. This person says, here in free Florida, they are passing a law requiring that businesses take cash. And like I said, again, it's some, it's some places that's fighting, but it's going to eventually be a, a losing battle. Okay, it says, um, uh, 
uh, boycotts of these places are in order. And you can do what you want. No one should patronize any business that won't take cash. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It's places that all over the world, it's places in the world, man, that don't take cash at all. You know, they done moved away from this. You try going to places, you know, like Sweden or, you know, it's a few places, man, where you just say they not, they're going to be looking at you stupid as hell. You're trying to whip out some cash. This person says, I am forced to have a bank account just so I can receive a social security check. Yup, I hate it. My account has been hacked and I rarely use it. It's my, it's a joke. My mother-in-law has been hacked numerous times in the, in the last few years as they make us all go digital. And that's one of the things that they're going to try and use, too. They're going to be, you know, he's going to come with all aspects of how much better it's going to be. There's not going to be no more theft. We're, you know, there's not going to be anyone that can hack. You know, they're going to come with all kinds of stuff that's saying, okay, this is safer now. It says, I expect, because, you know, you know, the scripture says that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. We understand how this man gets down. It says, I expect we will continue to lose our money to hackers and banks who feel they have the right to manipulate the, the, um, their customers. Salakia. Their customers' accounts. If I had my way, I would not do business with any bank until they get, until they can guarantee my account would not be hacked. I will continue to use cash. And how they're going to be able to guarantee it is by, and you can get this goddamn chippity chip in your ass. This person says if they won't take money, they shouldn't be in business. Uh, this person says, oh, oh, oh my God, all butt hurt because the greenbacks are not on hand. Guys, come on, come on. Guys, common, common sense should tell you those books are not real currency. They're just like credit, same thing. Only difference is once it's in your hand, it's in your hand, you can't hide what you're making anymore. That's what all this is really about. So I call it for what it is, people mad because they can't hide. Hit me their cash anymore. Going to be hard to sell those drugs using cash at Venmo. Laugh my ass off and make it harder to hide people. So people can stay on food stamps. And that's what this is really about. Yeah, we need to learn how to spell, motherfucker. Always prepaid debit cards available. Yeah, them shits can be expensive though. I haven't used actual cash in years, but I should still be, but it should still be accepted. It says shove your bitcoins too. It says BS cash is king. I will not comply with the globalist communists. If a business is no cash, it's no good for me. Mm. Transaction fees up the ass too. Pushing someone into using a bank account in order to pay for something is discrimination against lower income people who choose not to use one. Makes sense from one of the most dense populations of homeless people. They're breaking federal law. Yeah, yeah. See, my thing is I was trying to scroll through here and just try and see, like, do they actually do any of these people actually really know? Like, what's the end game for this? And I'm not seeing it. Yeah, we've gone through enough comments. There's quite a few of them, you know, but... Shit, I done went through maybe 20, 30, 40. But I'm not seeing nobody mention Revelation 13, 16, man. That market, the beauty and the beast. And like I said, again, that's what it's all boiling down to. But anyway, we're getting closer and closer, fam. Closer and closer, closer and closer. So... I'm going to end out there. I don't want to keep it long like that anyway. But, um, you know, hey, repent to the Father, Yahweh, in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. And just come out of your works of darkness, man, because the kingdom is at hand. This is one of the last major prophecies to happen um, before the Lord's coming, man. So, you know, and this is for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, because you are those people. You are the, the, the very poor that, are they, that they're talking about um, underbanked. <laughs> or unbanked because you know there's some you know jake out here okay but you know generally a lot of these you know poor these poor people are you know our people you know so to speak so and he's he's most definitely he wants to force our people into you know just basically 
making him our God, so to speak, man. No, you don't want to do that, man. Trust me when I tell you, you don't want to do that. Anyway, with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying for me. I'll